welcome to this session uh, and it's called as you know the relevance of podcasts in English language teaching and I'm speaking to you today from Rochester in the UK where we are all waiting for tomorrow when we go to the polls and we vote in our um, next uh, Prime Minister so as you can imagine the country is very nervous uh, over here Lovely memories I have of Venezuela. This is one of them, uh, which uh, thank you very much for Evelyn for a, a wonderful uh, tour. And Miguel has done a great job of introducing me, uh, all the different things that I do. And uh, one of those things um, is uh, as a teacher trainer. And really, I'm speaking to you uh, this afternoon as a, as a teacher trainer. Um, and if anybody would like uh, a copy of this uh, little book here, which is about activities in Business English, I'll send Miguel a code for you so you can download that for free um, after this webinar. So um, let's make a start. We're looking at the world of uh, podcasts and uh, I've broken this down into a very brief tour of uh, podcasts and podcasting. I'll mention a few apps and then I'll finish off with just one or two conclusions. And could I just say that some of these conclusions are very, very personal. Um, they're not really necessarily based on the literature because I think everybody has a particular view. And my view about podcasts will come over, I think, uh, in this session. And I think everybody here is very familiar with this word, this blended portmanteau word, uh, which was uh, formed uh, by the merger of, um, of a corporate product, an iPod, and um, something we're all very familiar with, which is broadcasts and uh, broadcasting. Um, and I think when podcasts first arrived, many teachers said, so what? Uh, we've always used radio programs in our teaching. Uh, there's nothing new here. Um, but as time went on, people began to see that it was very, very different, that these podcasts could be transferred into a mobile device, that um, students could jog and listen whenever they wanted to, to these uh, materials. And so it became clear that there was a big difference between using radio programs and then using uh, radio programs that were stored in a mobile uh, format on the computer and so on. And this is a very interesting story, I think, because it's not the technology in itself which is um, important for teachers. It's the realization of the things that you can do in terms of the pedagogy and it was when people understood this new uh, possibilities for the pedagogies that uh, things began to take off. Now we all talk about podcasts um, but in actual fact I think that we're maybe talking about different things. Um, a very very uh, wide definition of a podcast would be here, an audio file intended to be downloaded onto a personal media player. I mean, what does that mean? Does it mean your favorite song um, from iTunes? Um, it's quite clear that there's lots and lots of things that could fall into this category, even though most people would agree that really we're talking about one particular kind of file, um, which is the MP3 format. Um, um, and a much narrower definition of a podcast is the one that maybe um, people look at when they think of, okay, it is a program, but it's often part of a series of programs. And each week you can expect new installments of those programs. And that really what we're discussing is um, subscribing to these um, programs and that they'll automatically uh, <coughs> be pushed down into our into our machines so clearly uh, like many things in technology we use the term podcast very very loosely and um, I think that uh, if you look at the very first definition take any piece of uh, teaching material now from a publisher and you can see that students have access to all of these files these audio files um, saved in this format mp3 format um, so it's a very 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 different uh, teaching world 
world. So, let me just ask everybody out there that's uh, actually uh, p participating in, in this live uh, webinar, what do you think the relevance of podcasts is today to your teaching? Um, could you type in a letter, um, type in a high letter, five, this is a Likart scale, from five down to one, so five would mean that they're very, very, very relevant. Four, relevant. Three, quite neutral, somewhere in the middle. Two is not relevant and one is not at all relevant. So please could you just type your number as to your own personal answer to that question into the uh, the, the box. Thank you Is Isella, that's a five. That's a very, very interesting start. And Okay, thank you very much to uh, Nairobi. That's another five. Luciana and Paul, they're on the other side of the scale, so not really that uh, relevant particularly. And Victor, you're, um, you're somewhere in the middle. Well, please can you remember your number, and then in 10 minutes' time, 15 minutes, when we finish uh, the input, um, you could reflect back and see if at all um, your view has changed. I mentioned um, that podcasts uh, is, is it's like an umbrella term really you know it, it means quite a lot of different things and I've put some of those things here just to um, flesh out the idea of podcasts and podcasting that we have podcasts which are very very tightly scripted if you make your own podcast this could be you working to a very tight script and reading it or maybe uh, you have a podcast where you interview somebody so it's semi-scripted um, and then we have unscripted and there's a very famous example on the web of two people two guys that just talk to each other without particularly planning anything out and these are examples of unscripted much more natural language there but far harder for students I think so it's useful to think about the reasons for these are you using them for very very intensive listening they'd be quite short in that ground and very very few people think about podcasts for background listening, but just think about your car, and if you do um, have the possibility of playing MP3 files in it, or if you're just sitting, uh, relaxing on a beach, and you're just listening to stuff, if you're listening to things in the target language, I listen to films all the time without looking at the screen. That's very, very different. Um, you as a teacher might produce the podcast, and of course, your students students might be engaged in, in, in producing it as well. Um, and we've already seen that publishers have completely different, um, if you like, situations for creating podcasts. They go to a studio. It's actually done in a very, very high level commercial way. Totally different to perhaps you sitting at your own computer and making a, a podcast yourself. And the world is full of authentic podcasts now, particularly if you're interested in business English, for example. So I think that's important to say on our, um, as we start our tour of podcasts, that there's uh, so many different kinds. And um, one of the most important things ever written about uh, using technology, I think, is that call is context specific. Call computer aided language learning. And so I can sit here in, Eng in England and talk about podcasts, but um, it could be that if you work as a freelance teacher, if you work in a university, if you work in a, um, a private language school, all these situations are completely different. And so you could hear this webinar in many, many different ways, just constantly coming back to your own situation. So. What is out there at the moment? Well, thank you for the invitation to speak to you guys. Uh, it meant I had to rush off and have a look at some of the things out there. And I found quite a lot of interesting stuff. This is ESL pod. Um, and if you're an English language teacher, you might want to think, OK, this goes up every day. There's the podcast. Um, and that somebody somewhere is also creating um, 
a transcript for that. Here's the transcript that students can um, download each day. And uh, one of the things I notice is that I personally may not use this in my own teaching. And I think that's a judgment that we all have to make. Just because it's out there doesn't mean, of course, that we have to use it. We're always critically looking at the things that are available. That's something which is free. Um, here's something else. And one of the interesting things about this website called Podcasts in English is, first of all, it's up to date. And secondly, it deals with a lot of weird and strange topics that I can't even begin to tell you about. What if Donald Trump said something absolutely bizarre or tweeted something weird and invented a new word? Maybe there's a podcast about it. And so it just struck me that we have our course, which we deliver, which is you usually very planned and then you have lots and lots of extra listening possibilities that uh, you can um, you know bring into your lessons and what's nice about this particular website is that it comes with an app and so students can subscribe to the website and have it downloaded into them their machines each day um, I have to thank Mark uh, from the British Council um, for his invitations to Venezuela, so it seems sensible to mention if you're a low-level learner, um, there's a lot of free material out there which might meet your classroom needs. Here's one example from um, the British Council. But I work in a business English background, and so one of the nice things to do, perhaps after this session, if you are teaching business English is just to type in a subject plus podcasts. So you might type in, for example, logistics plus podcasts uh, or architecture plus podcasts and actually find some of the audio material which is available on the internet, which is particularly good for your classes. So I think let's just pause for a moment and just think, really, there is a huge um, choice in English language teaching between whether you are using uh, published materials, you're walking down Lane, for example. Um, somebody in Venezuela told me that um, course books are not necessarily so popular because of reasons of cost, for example, which has meant a big move to uh, digital. These are already created for you. Or whether you want to do it yourself, DIY, do you want to sit down, go down way, and actually create um, material yourself? And I think that's a really, really big uh, division. And so I'm sure that many of the things that you've studied on this course uh, connected with speaking into the microphone, using Audacity, for example, to record and edit. They're things that you've covered, and so you're quite aware of doing it yourself. Um, this is something that my uh, co-writer has written, and um, what he has said is if you're going to do it yourself, these are some of the things just to keep in mind. Um, Perhaps doing it in from from a script might be better, and thinking about how long it is, and the, the actual language content that you're using, and maybe trying to keep it quite realistic. And the that, the the whole um, advantage of actually rehearsing something, so you don't have to do too much editing, and then how to distribute it. So there's quite a lot to do um, if you're going to do it yourself. So what I'm going to do next is just invite you into my own personal context. This is the context I work in. Um, it might be uh, similar perhaps to some of the contexts that one or two of you work in. I'm not sure, but I work in an EAP context. So my students come for six weeks before they start their university course. And the first thing that I ask them is, why is listening so difficult in English? And we brainstorm a huge number of reasons. I won't go through all these reasons, but I'm sure that you're very well aware that English in particular has a huge number 
of difficulties which make it incredibly difficult to understand. If you teach Spanish or you teach Italian, maybe you have a different set of uh, circumstances or a different set of problems. Um, but certainly um, in the UK, culture is one of the things that our students find really difficult to, uh, to understand. So I establish why listening is so difficult and what I find is very, very interesting is that students actually come to class thinking that they can understand me okay. Um, so when we think about how listening and teaching listening has changed in the digital age. I think this is really where podcasts can come in very, very clearly here. In the past, I would ask my students to always listen twice, but clearly um, my students don't have that, uh, that kind of control over the number of times that they listen to. And the fact that now, if you want to improve your listening of any language, you can do as much out of the class or more than you can do inside the classroom. And I think that working on strategies for good listening is one of the goals of the, of the teaching that I do. And students now, especially in the area of podcasts, have so much choice. This is what some of my students love, Sherlock. It's not part of my course, but they're learning English because they want to understand Martin Freeman and Benedict Cumberbatch. So this is my lesson where I use a podcast in our first listening lesson. The first thing I do is just I ask my students, what's in the news? This may not be relevant for your context because the answer may be far too depressing and you can imagine that the answer now to this question um, there's only one thing in the news unfortunately uh, which is terrorism here in the UK and um, so obviously this is a, a very very sensitive learn area um, but usually students can brainstorm lots of fun things like sport um, and so on, uh, of, of things that are in the news. And then I ask them to listen to the news on a podcast. And what's lovely is to bring in um, portable speakers now and use the speakers um, linked up with my iPhone. It's so easy, I think, nowadays to transport listening material into the classroom. Students have to listen to two minutes of the news introducing each topic. They have a worksheet like this. They write down um, what they hear. But of course, what happens is that the um, actual recording is so fast that they don't catch anything. So there's a lot of opportunity to listen again, listen for details, and finally to think about what they can do after the language classroom. So I've been speaking so far very much about podcasts linked with listening, but clearly that's only a small part of the story. Um, there are many uh, opportunities for students to improve their reading um, just simply by downloading a transcript and listening and reading together at some point. Um, if students create their own podcasts, then they would have to write the transcripts, which is a very, very good opportunity to practice writing. And when they do plan out their content, of course, they're speaking to each other. So one really nice practical tip for, that I found works in my context for using uh, podcasts is to use a universal podcasting worksheet. So you have a, a blank area like this so students can go home, listen to the podcast and then um, come back to class and summarize their uh, podcast for other people in the group and that links very well I think with personalizing learning so that's really how I use podcasts as a great shock to my students before the lesson they think listening is easy and they uh, are very happy that they understand me as a teacher but I think that that's too easy and it's doing my students a disservice to make them think listening is easy and they have to have a taste of the hard uh, reality of English which is it's usually spoken at a very very high speed not as fast as Spanish I would say but uh, certainly fast enough so 
we're coming to the end of the, this webinar uh, now, um, and we're going to move over to questions soon. But I did want to, uh, after this short tour, just mention one or two apps. And um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry that Evelyn has no audio, but I'm hoping that she may be able to listen to the recording perhaps later. Um, but anyway, this is an app which links with the British Council material that I mentioned earlier, uh, which is, um, this one is for Big City, Small World, and you can see how useful this is for learners if you're trying to learn a language and you have this kind of learning material um, in your mobile device. Um, I mentioned I personally um, uh, do a lot of business English and uh, Ted I think if you do do business English is very familiar before this webinar I always thought of Ted as a way of viewing presentations and now I realize that you can actually subscribe to audio uh, of um, TED Talks using um, the TED app which is um, really really interesting so I hope that there is a suitable um, app that might be useful for you um, in your context. This is how lucky um, I am in being in a country where the BBC put podcasts up each day. And I think if I'm a learner, the amount of material here is absolutely unbelievable. As you go through this site and look at music and you look at history and it's so easy to find something that you're interested in. And even though I mentioned to my university students that iTunes U, uh, so it's not just iTunes, but iTunes U, U stands for university, is a fantastic place um, to get uh, to get podcasts. I don't really monitor what they do because I don't really know what they're listening to. Clearly, there you've got Spanish, there you've got um, different subjects. Um, every single subject uh, under the sun coming out of great universities around the world. There's no shortage of listening materials, but what students do with that material, um, obviously, is uh, can be very, very different. So, I'm going to um, finish off uh, the actual input part of this webinar now uh, with just one or two conclusions and then I'm going to um, just open things up for questions. Um, and what I'd like to say at this point is um, it's unbelievable how much is, is out there in this area. I thought there was a lot on the internet just for um, language teaching, but in terms of podcasts also, it's absolutely incredible. And I think that how we train our students uh, in um, actually exploiting this material is really important. This is just a personal belief that um, just because there are podcasts there doesn't mean that learning will take place. And I think our job is to show students what we think is useful out of all the stuff that's there, ranging from authentic um, to podcasts made by language teachers, for example. Um, and not only where to find things, but which strategies are going to help them in uh, benefiting from that material. So clearly, um, context is everything. Uh, I think that uh, you will know your own teaching context and uh, you will be the best critical judges for what um, is going to uh, to occur. So I think my answer to our podcast relevant uh, is is somewhere like a number four um, in that yes, I do believe that podcasts remain relevant. But I'd like to qualify that very, very slightly uh, with one of the great things ever written about computers, which is it's not so much the program, it's more what you do with it. So it's, in other words, not so much necessarily the actual podcast itself, but what's actually happening um, to those uh, podcasts in language teaching. So thank you very, very much for the invitation. I hope some of that has been useful uh, to you and um, I'd just like to uh, show uh, just a couple of references there. Um, I can make the PDF 
uh, make a PowerPoint, sorry, make the PowerPoint into a PDF. Or I, th I think actually Miguel's probably already done that, um, so that's probably available to you. Um, so thank you so much for coming along in all the um, difficult situation that sometimes you may find yourself in. Thank you so much. And could I just say...